So the next thing we are going to speak about is uh, the renovascular diseases. So there is a few things that can occur to you that can lead to alteration of your uh, basically blood pressure. And if we speak about blood pressure in, in the future, you will discover that it's actually taught by a nephrologist, not by a cardiologist. Because the main organ that controls your blood pressure is actually your kidney and not your um, basically uh, and not your heart okay so uh, moving on now we have the following so it goes something like this close to it close enough yes look if we say that something happened and uh, your heart uh, has heart failure. Let's just speak about heart failure for a second. In case of heart failure, what happens to the cardiac output? Up, and, up or down? Down. Good. In case of heart failure, the cardiac output is down. So what happens to the kidney perfusion? Come on, cardiac output is down, so the amount of blood going out of the heart will be down. So the perfusion to the kidney, there will be low perfusion to the kidney, yeah? Low kidney perfusion. So what will happen to the amount of blood going to your afferent arterial? Down, less blood to the afferent arterial. What is going to happen to the RAS system? If you have less blood in the afferent arterial will become activated excellent and when it becomes activated it will lead to hypotension or hypertension hypertension exactly and if you have hypertension uh, what will happen to the afterload afterload will be up and if your afterload is up what is going to happen to your cardiac output No, cardiac output is going down. Guys, cardiac output is, this is the heart, sorry. If, if this is the heart, cardiac output is how much blood moved from the heart to the outside of the heart, uh, bare one minute, okay? So, uh, the stroke volume basically comes down. Why? Because the afterload is the pushing back. Yes, so it's pushing back against your heart. So the cardiac output will go down. If your cardiac output will go down, what happened to the, your kidney perfusion? So look what happened here. See, it's a vicious cycle. It's a cycle that will keep moving, 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 moving until it destroys both your heart and your kidney. And that's cardiorenal syndrome okay so let's take a look at what they write here they write you uh, they, they are speaking here about renovascular disease not exactly cardiovascular syndrome uh, cardiorenal syndrome that we spoke about now now speaking about renovascular diseases renovascular diseases are diseases that affects the renal artery okay they can be unilateral or can be bilateral uh, renal artery stenosis so when you have renal artery stenosis if you remember I kept telling you about it in case of uh, like when, when we spoke about uh, cardiology I thought sorry I told you no come on in cardiology I told you that uh, basically that you have uh, 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 like one problem in which you had two types of causes, causes that le lead to renal artery stenosis. The first problem was uh, atherosclerosis of the renal artery, and the second cause was, was fibromuscular dysplasia of the renal artery. If we are speaking about fibromuscular dysplasia, it's most common in women or in men. Exactly, it's in ladies. Why? Why women have it more often than men? 
because they have estrogen and estrogen lead to proliferation of smooth muscles so estrogen lead to proliferation of smooth muscle and that the smooth muscles is more where inside of the your tonica media and that tonica media lead basically to uh, decrease the diameter of your vessel yeah so you will have vasoconstriction and that vasoconstriction will lead to uh, decrease decrease less amount of blood to your afferent arterial and when you have less amount of blood to your afferent arterial tell me please what will happen to the RAS system? High or low? Activated, yes, activated RAS, and that lead, and hypertension, yeah? Hypertension again. So, uh, this disease happens mostly in a uh, female, yes? Female with a lot of estrogen, yeah? So, Let's contrast that with atherosclerosis of the renal artery. It's most commonly in, in which population? Really old people or really young people? Old, man or lady? Man, yes, okay, so. Um, and it's a due to atherosclerosis. So if we speak about atherosclerosis, um, it's just like the typical stuff, you know, you have endothelial damage, uh, but due, for example, to hypertension, it can cause it, um, and, uh, or smoking. So after the endothelial damage, you will have LDL and macrophages, uh, um, uh, going where they will go under your, under your endothelium. And when they go under your endothelium, that will lead to what? Accumulation. And the creation of what? Foamy cells. And then smooth muscles start migrating. Yes, this is, I'm just describing the pathogenesis of the atherosclerosis. Small mu mu muscles start migrating there. And that lead to extra cellular matrix deposition. Can someone help with me? Which growth factor help the migration of the smooth muscles? Which growth factor helps in the migration of the smooth muscles? Yes. Lately derived growth factor and FGF. Okay, so after that, vessel become narrow, and we have renal artery stenosis in an old man. Okay, so let's read what they write now. Unilateral, no, the pathology I'm writing now, this is atherosclerosis. Uh, renal tubular uh, stenosis is due to atherosclerosis. Okay. Uh, the first one was, uh, uh, the first one was fibromuscular dysplasia. Okay, so unilateral or bilateral renal artery stenosis, the patient will have less renal perfusion, which increases the renin, increases the angiotensin, leading to hypertension. Most common cause of secondary hypertension in an adult. So, secondary hypertension. Why? Because in, uh, uh, the, the most common cause of hypertension overall is essential, but the most common secondary hypertension is renal artery stenosis. So, they write two causes, atherosclerotic plague and fibromuscular dysplasia. If it was atherosclerotic plague, it mostly affects the proximal portion of the renal artery. Proximal to what? To the aorta. So it's usually in an old ma man who's, who's what? A smoker. And then we have fibromuscular dysplasia, which affect mostly the distal two-third of the renal artery, which is more closer to the kidney, or segmental branches, which is even inside of the kidney, usually in a young or middle-aged female, because of what, guys? 
Why? Why it's in this patient? Why? Yes. Estrogen. Come on, man. Yeah. <laughs> Somebody was lazy enough just to forward the message. Okay. So <laughs> if we speak fibromuscular dysplasia versus atherosclerosis, can you tell me, please, which area of the vessel will be affected? So if we say fibromuscular dysplasia, uh, the area, it will be the tonica media or the tonica intima? Media, yes, which contain the muscle. While atherosclerosis, it will be the tonica intima. Yes, they love to ask about this one. Okay, so for unilateral uh, RAS, which means like one, one kidney is a, yes, so look, if we speak about the atherosclerosis process, it's a process of accumulation of cholesterol and fat under the endothelium, which is in the tonica intima. Remember that the vessels, our vessels, is consisting of three layers, yeah? So artery histology consists of three layers. You have your tonica externa, uh, you have this tonica adventitia or also tonica externa, tonica media, and tonica intima. Under the tonica intima, the atherosclerosis process happen. But if we speak about the smooth portion, this is smooth muscle portion is the tonica media, in which fibromuscular dysplasia happen. Okay? And you can even here see the vasovasorium, which we spoke about it to be really important in uh, aneurysm formation in case of aortic aneurysm here you go okay so let's go back here we see for unilateral uh, renal artery stenosis affected kidney can atrophy and there will be as uh, asymmetric kidney size okay so imagine what is happening here so the patient uh, will have uh, the following so here you have one kidney has renal artery and another kidney, another kidney have another renal artery. Let me check. Actually, somebody is asking if it's our last topic for today. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Because I'm leaving cancers for tomorrow. Tomorrow we'll do cancers and we will do the pharmacology. Pharmacology is super easy. So yeah, this is our last topic for today. Okay. So going back here, you have two kidneys. If I block only one kidney, what will happen to this kidney? It, uh, it will become bigger or smaller if I decrease the perfusion. Smaller. It will atrophy. That is correct. So the other kidney will have to recompensate for that. Yes, so it will become bigger. It will undergo the process of hypertrophy because it has to compensate for what just happened. So for unilateral renal artery stenosis, affected kidney can atrophy asymmetric kidney size. Um, okay, so let's stop at this area and take a look here and then come back here. So, renal artery stenosis, if it was a proximal portion, is it atherosclerosis or fibromuscular dysplasia? Just write A or F. Okay, atherosclerosis, good. Distal two-third? Okay, good. Guys, if you forget about it, just remember, what is the most common area in your body to be affected by atherosclerosis? most common area to be affected by atherosclerosis aorta aorta do not get, get tricked by the coronary coronary is the second most common so is the aorta so the area near your aorta will be the one affected by the atherosclerosis where the one distal to it it will be the fibromuscular dysplasia so okay let the anyway so we have renal artery stenosis that will lead to ischemia renal release Angiotensinogen, which is made by which organ? Which organ make angiotensinogen? The liver. Good. It becomes angiotensin 1. And what is renin? Renin is a hormone or an enzyme, guys. Renin is an enzyme. Excellent. Um, also called angiotensinogenase. So it will convert angiotensinogen into angiotensin 1. 
and then one will be converted to two in the lung using the ACE, which is angiotensin converting enzyme. And this angiotensin two will lead to vasoconstriction, leading to hypertension. Also, it, uh, we know that angiotensin two can directly affect the BCT, leading to more sodium retention. Yes? And also, increased in the angiotensin two can go to your adrenal gland, activate which zona in the adrenal gland? Tell me, please. Which zona in the adrenal gland will be activated to secrete aldosterone? Zona glomerulosa. So zona glomerulosa will be activated, leading to more sodium retention, leading to hypertension. Okay, excellent. So let's go back here. They write, <clears throat> renal venous sampling will show increased renin uh, in the affected kidney. Okay, and decreased renin in the unaffected kidney. So here we have a renal artery, and let's imagine that we have a renal vein. Let's say that this is the renal vein. If you do sampling of the renin in this area, the renin will be skyrocketing. Why? Because decreased perfusion will increase the RAS activity here. So you will have more renin here, more renin. While in the other kidney, there will be less renin. Yeah? So the RAS system is activated, and for the other kidney, it's nonsense. So it will decrease the renin secretion. But for the affected kidney, there will be more renin. Okay, so for bilateral renal artery stenosis, patient can have a sudden rise in the creatinine after starting an ACE inhibitor. Thus, ARPS and renin inhibitor are due to their interference with the RAS-mediated renal perfusion. Let me just explain this for a second. So, if we speak about, this is actually super important. Uh, it's the last thing for us today, so just focus with it, and then you will be free because it's important. So if we speak about the afferent arteriole, this is the, your glomerulus, and this is your afferent arteriole. Okay, so angiotensin, uh, now we have a blockage of this area, yeah? We have a blockage of this area. What is going to happen to your GFR? GFR is going down. That is correct. GFR will be low. So the, when the kidney sees the GFR is low, it want to increase it. One way to increase your GFR is to activate the RAS system, yes? If you activate the RAS system, it will produce angiotensin, uh, gen, uh, angiotensin 2, and that angiotensin 2 will lead to constriction of the efferent arteriole. If I constrict the efferent arteriole, what, was, what will happen to the GFR, guys? It will go up. It will go up, exactly. So that's good. The GFR will go up. But what happens next? If it's in one kidney, it's a problem. But if it's in two kidneys, it's a big problem. So if the other kidney has the exact same thing, the same process is happening. If I suddenly introduce an ACE inhibitor, an ACE inhibitor, what it will lead to the angiotensin? Decrease it or increase it? It will go down. It will go down. So it will decrease it. If I decrease the angiotensin, uh, angiotensin 2 what is uh, the, there will be vasodilatation of my efferent arteriole if my efferent arteriole is vasodilated what will happen to my GFR decrease in both kidney significantly really really quick get you in a shock so look what they write for bilateral renal artery stenosis, patient can have sudden rise for in creatinine, which means total kidney dysfunction due to decreased GFR. Because remember what I told you before, the lower GFR you have, the higher creatinine. GFR and creatinine are inverse relationship, low GFR, high creatinine. So for bilateral RAS, uh, which is renal artery stenosis, patient can have sudden rise in the creatinine after starting um, an ACE inhibitor, ARPS or renin inhibitor, due to their interference with the RAS-mediated renal perfusion. It can present with a severe or refractory hypertension. What is that? Renal artery stenosis, flash pulmonary edema, and epigastric uh, a flank or a flank brewery. Let me explain this. This is actually important. So, if you look at your umbilicus, like um, navel, umbilical cord, go a little bit above it, to the right and to the left. Put your stethoscope there and there. 
If you start healing a brewery, which sounds something like this. If you hear that, that means that there is some form of stenosis in that area. I'm not saying that you hear it on the midline. That's something else. I'm saying that you hear it to the sides, which means renal artery stenosis. Patient with renal artery stenosis may also have a stenosis in the large vessel arteries because if it, it was due to atherosclerosis, you can imagine that it can, uh, this is a systemic disease. It does not only affect the renal vessel. It's all over the place. And that's it for our today's session. I hope you liked today's session and tomorrow we'll be back. Um, tomorrow we have a class. It is at 6 o'clock, not at 7. Today we started at 7. Tomorrow we start at 6. And we will see you guys tomorrow. And hopefully tomorrow we'll be done with renal. So see you guys tomorrow. Thank you so much and bye-bye.